Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Empires and Puzzles video, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Fenexa. Before we get to this video, if you haven't checked out Gemstone Legends yet, come check it out. There are no joke thousands of players from Empires and Puzzles that have come over already, and for good reason. Simply put, it's a really fun game with some big advantages over Empires and Puzzles. We both know that the players that join these games earliest are some of the most dominant players. And this game is starting to really take off, so the longer you wait, the more you miss out on. Not only can you support the channel by using the download link in the description of this video, or by scanning the QR code on your screen, but doing so will also give you a free $50 starter bonus with an epic hero, gems, and gold coins, all for free just by using the link or QR code provided. And then when you start, you'll gain access to beginner events exclusively for players who use the link or QR code provided that will give you another strong epic hero, a set of five star legendary equipment, and a platinum scroll for another guaranteed epic or legendary hero. Lastly, I have created a bunch of videos in a Gemstone Legends playlist on my YouTube channel to make learning this game as easy and fun as possible. So hit that download link in the description and get started with one of the most fun and deep match three RPGs. There's a great community in Gemstone Legends. It has some huge advantages over Empires and Puzzles. And overall, I think you guys are really gonna like it. We'll continue with our look through the Bard Heroes. A lot of people were asking, I think at this, I think I've missed finding one of them, but I can't think who it was. Um, she was an interesting one, decreases revival chance, uh, Bard family bonus gives plus 5% mom generation to heroes not in a family bonus, um, and from the other videos it looks like if heroes are in the one, one member of a one hero family bonus, like how they've updated some of them to apply to individual heroes, they still get the mana bonus, so maybe that's a bug, maybe not. Uh, we have an average speed, red monk... Healer, 42%. Duration of buffs is reset. All allies get plus 30% critical chance. All allies get plus 50% attack for four turns. Those are both four turns, which makes a big difference. I've talked before about my opinion on three turn versus four turn buffs, and that fourth turn feels like two turns more. Um, so, uh, quite impressive stats. And are they utilizing her well? No. Uh, just, I mean, the attack boost you can use on its own. Um, you know, obviously, which when she fires the second time, resets it no matter what. Um, she'll reset this healing, which could be good, I think, was their thinking. Um, however, 50% attack, pretty nice. 30% crit, that's the one that gets pretty dangerous. Um, so let's check it out in action and see what it's like. She was the one that I was most interested in from that group. Um, that being said, I've seen the most copies of Reese. And who is the other one that I've seen around a bit? Um, I guess mostly here. I've seen a couple Winifreds. I've seen a couple Narcissas, Phenexa, and who was the one other one? I thought there was one more. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, so we're off to a good start. We're going to kill off part of this team just so that we don't lose, as always. Trying to fill a hero chest. Um, so yeah, I kind of feel like she's more of an offensive hero. Since you can time her with refreshing certain buffs, I do think what she does is pretty cool. Um... And I like seeing, you know, interesting heroes come out into the game. It's nice that's it, that she has some buffs of her own as well. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty cool and interesting hero. All right. We did not set her off with all these other ones, but we're about to take some big damage here. Oh. And then she's going to heal it all the way, and we're going to lose Kingston. What? 
Oh, revive, nice. Okay, let's just go on this side over here. They've all got this nice buff now, so we might see some big slash attacks. Let's keep our eye out for that. Principally, Sobek. Um, since he's got a monster attack stat and doesn't have attack down on him. So yeah, the, there's nothing really to show for her resetting buffs. It's just if you've got buffs there, she'll restart them again. Uh, I wanted to try to show some of the damage that she could contribute to, but um, I didn't. I don't think I saw any any crits proc there. So here's just increased attack. Quite a monster of a hit. Sobek with a little defense down now. Same attack boost. I don't believe you can. Jesus, 950 with the passive together. Um, I don't believe that you can crit on a standard hit. Um, only on slash attacks. So let's see if we can... 522, that was definitely a crit. I would hope so, because that's massive. The 200 seem a bit more typical. So I'm just trying to coax some hits out of them while I'm able to survive here. Yep, he just wants to pick on those two over there. Alright, we'll set her off again. We'll, we'll go around this one more time. This is getting dangerous for me, though. Two hundreds. I don't know if I can survive hits from all of them again. Let's try this. All right, we've played around long enough. So is there anything else I want to show with her? Heal is nice, not crazy, no cleanse, which I think um, at least I personally take cleansing as a given with healers. I just kind of expect that. It's not a reasonable expectation, but it is a common one. And it's something, it's a quality I value in a healer. This is a different type of hero. One, you can still make work, but maybe you'd want to have another cleanser on your team, like um, Reese, for example, Milena, um, you know, any of the other cleansers. I was trying to think of some heroes that are very fast speed if you have them, because um, that makes that heal and cleanse a little bit more. Uh, regularly accessible, which is also a nice component of a heal and cleanse. Um, so yeah, interesting hero. If you got her, I think that's great. I would have liked to have gotten her. Didn't. I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, she seems pretty cool. She could, let's see, would she be a titan hero? 50% attack's not really enough for, for titans. It, it can work, but it's not optimal. Um, I feel like she would be a good part of a big red stack with like, you know, if I'm thinking of ideal stuff here, a Marjana and an Asterius, something like that where you've got big damage, she can make that even bigger, make reds hit super hard, and give some survivability to that stack. Um, she could be good in an off-color stack as well, red and, uh, you know, th I'm thinking 3-2, her as being one of the two. Um... Because, obviously, that attack up is still going to apply to the other heroes in the opposite color. Um, so it just kind of depends which way you want to go with it. But I think she has a lot of synergy possibilities and therefore is a, a pretty cool hero. And now we must kill her. All right. Well, we took a lot of freaking damage, and we're still kicking, so that says something good about this team, too, I think. Alright, um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, I don't know what order I'll put these out in, but I've, I've have hit most of the five-star bard heroes. I think there were five of them. Maybe there were only four, and I'm wrong. There was one four-star as well, who I think is going to be really good for 
rush attack since it cuts the revival chance and refreshes ailments um, similar to the purple five star so um yeah thoughts in the comments down below please hit that like button and subscribe i really appreciate that support and it does matter so thank you guys for doing that and thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video